Welcome to Railway Empire 2 Fundamentals. All right, hi, this is Adkin, and welcome to another Railway Empire 2 Fundamentals video. We're continuing our look at supply and demand, and we're going to build upon the last one in which we covered how to figure out how many trains to run from a rural station in a real simple case. And now we're going to expand on that and maybe do a little what's called intermediate level um, planning and figure out how to optimize a cluster. Now, cluster is my term for any group of cities, in this case two, this will be a two-city cluster, any group of cities that work in a symbiotic relationship with one another to help one another grow. So they would have warehouses that would pass goods back and forth. They would have goods that they produce in their own factories that are moved back and forth between the cities so that they can be consumed. And in, both, in this case, the two city cluster, both cities would help one another grow. So I've set up a very simple setup here, and, I'm, and we're not going to talk about the design of this so much, it's just enough so you can understand it in this context. So if we look in our track mode, we can see uh, our warehouse situation. And we've got in Indianapolis, there's a brewery. We happen to own it. That's why that has that uh, mark under it. But these two here are our warehouse items, and we're tracking grain and lumber in Indianapolis. So we've got lumber coming down this way, grain going up this way. And down in Louisville, we have a meat industry, this, and then we have corn and sugar marked in our warehouse coming from corn and sugar down here right and so then we have lines running between the two cities which allow the goods the manufactured goods in the city and the raw materials from the warehouses to be exchanged with one another so how would we balance out this thing to make it work i would suggest you do it in kind of three phases so phase one is when you're starting out your money's tight you have just started the scenario and you're building this two city cluster and you don't have a lot of funds like i said what are you going to do Set up your line between the two, hook up the main things you need, which would be grain, lumber, corn, and sugar, and cattle for your meat industry. If you can hook all those up and have lines running into the, directly to the cities or into warehouses, whatever, what, you know, there's lots of, as I said, lots of ways to do it, but you get those set up and they're coming in and feeding your cities. Then to optimize this, what you do is say, okay, to start out, I'm just going to assume a demand of one in total. I want to meet a demand of one for my, my cluster. So then you go in and you say, okay, we learned last in the last uh, supply and demand video that 56 is the key number for a demand of one. If I can get a train in with eight wagons on it, Every 56 days, I can meet a demand of one every week, right? One every seven days. So just set everything to one. So what you do is you go in and you define your line, like this line here. Uh, we could look at the line that's coming out of here, and we can look at its definition, and we can see that it's, it's picking up the corn and going to Louisville, and it's taking 12 and a half days. Well, that's less than 56, so it can absolutely meet a total demand of one. And remember that total demand of one is the demand in Louisville plus the demand in Indianapolis because the corn that goes here will either go straight to the city of Louisville or into the warehouse and marked for Indianapolis and be carried up there by other trains. There's our one. So as long as we have all of our lines coming in under 56, we're good. And that'll get you started. And I can tell you that I, I set this up just like that with just one train running. There's one, two, three, four, five, six trains, one back and forth, running this whole network. And I got both of these cities to start growing very, very quickly. Phase two, I've got a little bit more money. My cities are starting to grow. And I want, I want to uh, account for that growth and be ready for it and make sure that I can keep growing. Phase two, then you think of it as a demand of one in each city. So now our demand just went up to two in a two city cluster and a three city cluster, our demand would go up to three, right? So our two city cluster example, and our total demand is now two. Then we go back to our lines and let's go like, look at this one here, this sugar line. We'll grab the route for it and we'll look at its definition. See, it's 13.8 days. Well, to meet a total demand of two, it needs to run every 28 days, so it's good. 
And we can also just eyeball and say, this is longer than these two, so these two are going to be good, right? So we know all these are good. This is a short line, so all we'd have to do really is think about this guy up here. Okay, so if I had a total demand of two in my system, I would need a 28-day route here to make that work, and I've got 18 days, so I'm good. That one train can handle that doubled-up growth. Now, the next, oh, and then to balance between the cities, uh, I'm going to save that for last. Then if the third phase would be kind of, okay, these guys are like 100,000 apiece. At 100,000 apiece, there's, a, there's a, a pattern that works like this. Your grain, lumber, corn, beer, and meat will tend to be at a demand of two in each city. All the other products, all the manufactured goods, all the other raw materials will be at a demand of one. So you can just take a two and a one and think of it that way and plan toward that and you'll be in really good shape without going to all the details and looking at the each city and how it, it needs 0.4 and this one needs 0.5 and that's 0.9 and this one over here is 1.6, you know. You don't have to do all that, just think of twos and ones. If I'm, if I'm ready for phase three and I wanna really grow these and I wanna get them up to the their kind of their peak, if you will, at 100, 120,000 in that area. Then I just want this line. This is my longest line, so I could check it, and I could say, okay, what what's your deal? So train station to Indianapolis, uh, it is 18, and it really needs to be, uh, for the wood, would be 2 plus 2 would be 4, 4 into 56 would be 14, so we really like to have this line at 14 to be able to handle these cities when they're large. So we would just add another train on there, and boom, now we've got a fast enough line to be able to handle the demand we have for lumber, right? Now grain is an exception. Let's talk about it. Grain all the way through this, phase one, phase two, phase three, is an exception because of the brewery. So the brewery is going to ask for a certain amount as well. So what I would do with the grain is I would set it for that one that we talked about plus the uh, one for the, for the brewery to start out. So to kind of set it at a two, in other words, make it meet that standard of 28, which we can see this short line would easily do in this case. But you might be hauling your grain from way out here somewhere, and you would have to look at it similar to the way we did the wood. So start it out at 28. Then when you get to phase two, you're going to get uh, more demand. You're going to have one here, one here, plus your brewery. So you could count it as like a, a three, and then and then count your grain as um, as an 18, and then and then make sure it's under 18, which by the way this one is. And then when you get to your full blown, it's going to be two plus two is four plus a couple for the brewery because breweries also have to match that two, right? The beer is two. So now it would be two, four, six. And if you do six into 56, you get about nine. And so if you can get that line under nine. So if I was looking for full growth uh, with that grain line, I would look at this and I would say, okay, I want that grain to be about a nine. It's an 11, I would probably pop another train on there, right? Whoops, I always do that. I would put another train on there and I would confirm it. That would be at phase three when it's really big, okay? The two cities are getting large. The other thing is for this particular one here is a little complication. Once they got big enough to take the vegetables, I could either have a separate vegetable line so I wouldn't have to count it in with this, or I could run them together, that would be fine. But if you're going to count it that way, let's, th let's, go, let's go through that exercise. We would have two, now I'm doing just the grain, two, four, plus two for the beer is six, and then we would have one is seven and another one's eight, for the vegetables, so if I could hit an eight, seven times eight is 56, so if I could get that line down to an average of seven, right now it's down to better than that, this line with two trains could actually handle 
these two cities at 100,000 plus people and get the grain and the uh, vegetables in there that we need to keep them going. All right, follow all that? All right, so let's do our um, city to city. It's a little bit different case, same kind of calculation, but uh, you have to think of it a little bit differently. When you are talking about the city to city, you're actually talking about having trains that are capable of taking everything from this city that, that it's responsible for and taking it to another city, right? So in our two city cluster, uh, the line coming out of Indianapolis would be responsible for sending beer and grain and lumber to Louisville in this setup and bringing back meat and corn and sugar from Louisville to Indianapolis. So it would be taking three products each way, right? And that's just because we just happen to have a balanced bill. Now you could have a bill where almost every product is coming into Indianapolis and then, then that we would need more trains because we're now taking a whole bunch of stuff here and we tend to come back not so full this way, be a little unbalanced, but you got to account for kind of the biggest case. So here we've got a balance, we got our three. Now early stage, everything counts as a one. So in phase one, we would just say one, two, three. So I've got to meet a demand of three down in Louisville because I got three products that each have a demand of one. So it's really, a, in effect, it's a demand of three and three into 56 is 18. So as long as my line is 18, I'm good. So if I look at the line, that runs between Indianapolis, Indianapolis to Louisville, right here. I think I messed that one up. Okay, I've got no trains on it, so let's put, let's run. And you could be, it could be a freight only, or it could be an automatic. Either one would work. Okay, I'm going to leave it at automatic. That's the simplest possible uh, design. Not the best design, but the simplest possible. One train is 11 days. So we said it needed to be able to hit 18. So one train could actually take care of all that load, take those three products down here in a timely fashion, pick up the three products here and take them back in a timely fashion and keep us going. Now, when we get to phase two, we're counting it as one and one in terms of demand, right? So um, it's really the same thing because your city to city is still just taking, fulfilling a demand of one. Now, when it's bigger, where it changes is when you get to a bigger city. Now we're setting up that some of these are twos, right? So if we looked at the three that we can bring out of here, we're counting all three of these as twos. So you actually have a demand of six that you're trying to fulfill. By that point, you're probably already running uh, veggies in here. That's a one, so that would be seven. And maybe you've got milk and that would be eight, right? So let's just leave it at that. You've got milk and veggies and these three here. So you get two, four, six, veggies is seven, milk is a one, so it's eight. So now I've got to, got to meet a demand of eight in Louisville. And eight into 56 is seven. And now I would need my line to be a seven in order to match all that. So I would just say, okay, Louisville to uh, Indianapolis, you're an 11. All I, believe it or not, one more train would actually haul everything I needed for a very large city uh, to, to function here because I could meet a demand of eight in Louisville with one train or two trains on this line. All right, so that's how you kind of do your city to city. That's how you balance your whole system. And once you do that, honestly, here's a little hint for you. If you've got a situation where you're in a mission, and let's say the very first mission, you started in Boston and you're working down there and you've been expanding out and you've gone up into Canada and you want to build um, Montreal, Quebec, a little two-city cluster. Fine, that's beautiful. Well, set it up like this and then plan it out for 100,000, right? And follow those guidelines we said for 100,000, run all your trains. Now you'll, you'll be a little bit, uh, you'll be spending some money you don't need to at first that you, I'm assuming at this point you got money to spend and you can set that up as full growth all the way to 100,000. And then the only time you'd ever need to go back and look at it is see what industries got put in there and do you like them or maybe watch it a little more closely and put the industries in that you like, right? To promote the growth because you'd really like to have six 
unique industries in here that are all being provided raw materials so that you can keep the cities growing and you'll have an, a practically a set it and forget it because you can set it up for its hundred thousand uh, levels and just leave it alone and it'll just make you mo money and it'll start making you more money and it'll start making you more money and it'll make you more money because it'll keep getting bigger and bigger and uh, consuming more goods which you'll be prepared to ship i hope that gives you the basic idea of how you can set up your clusters to grow and to have the right number of trains running so that you never delay your growth, but at the same time, you don't have too many trains running. And then alternatively, how you can go out and do a little set of, and forget it and set up a cluster and assume a certain level of growth that you want to reach. Go ahead and set up your trains and your whole system for that level and let that run on its own and feel free to work on other parts of your mission or your map or your whatever it is you're up to and know that that part that you've left behind is going to function and continue to grow. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it'll help you become a better player. I hope you'll like, comment, and subscribe and join us for more Railway Empire 2 videos. Thank you.